If all the volcanoes on Earth suddenly erupted together, it'd be loud. <laughs> We'd also have around 1,500 of these formations bursting at once. Now, normally it's just 10 to 20 volcanoes that are active each day. But what would the world look like if they all blew their tops simultaneously? Geologists think it wouldn't be pretty. Even if only the land volcanoes erupted together, it would set off a chain reaction way worse than anything we've ever seen before. The two big problems would be ash and volcanic gases. While the explosions in lava would be damaging for people nearby, the real danger lies in what happens next. A thick layer of ash would cover the planet, blocking out sunlight completely. No sunlight means no photosynthesis which means crops would fade away and temperatures would drop considerably. And all this ash cloud could remain in our atmosphere for up to 10 years. Now, ash aside, there's also acid rain to worry about. Volcanic gases like hydrochloric acid and sulfur dioxide would mix with the atmosphere and fall back down as acid rain. This type of weather would harm the groundwater and ocean surfaces. Even if humans would find a way to survive up to this point, we'd have no corals and no other sea creatures around. Scientists have seen similar events in Earth's history at a smaller scale. Big volcanic eruptions have been linked to mass extinctions. When Mount Pinatubo erupted in 1991, it cooled parts of the world for two years. But the extra carbon dioxide from these eruptions could also heat the planet the same way we turn our stoves to broil for that extra crispy layer on our casserole. Mm. Geologists also mention that there's evidence in our atmosphere that stuff like this may have happened in the distant past. During the Cretaceous period, carbon dioxide levels were way higher than today, which made it difficult for marine life to thrive. Who would survive all this? Probably just some extremophiles. These organisms that survive in harsh conditions like hot springs or deep undersea vents. As for humans, we could all lay low in underground bunkers until things clear up. Or build multiple space stations that could fit us all. Yeah, right. The chances of all volcanoes erupting at once, though, are very slim. Whew. That's because there isn't one giant source supplying all the volcanoes on Earth. Each one of these openings has its own deposit of magma except for a few cases where they indeed share the supply. For example, in 1912, Novorupta in Alaska erupted alongside another volcano sharing magma. Scientists have also found evidence of magma hiding under volcanic areas, like under the Taupau Volcanic Zone in New Zealand. This magma can spread out horizontally for long distances, but it's still just a local feature. Even if we consider all the magma under Taupau as one system, it's not connected to other volcanic areas like Indonesia or the Philippines. Because the great majority are isolated, volcanoes can't sink up to erupt at once. The magma comes from different processes, like mantle decompression or adding water to the mantle through subduction. There's no way to make all these different volcanoes erupt together because of how tectonics work. Now, that doesn't mean we won't see interesting volcano activity in the future. Take an underwater area near British Columbia, where recently about 200 small earthquakes per hour have been noted. Deep beneath the Pacific Ocean floor, off the coast of Vancouver Island, magma is set to erupt, heating the water so much that it'll bubble like soda. However, this event will likely go unnoticed by anyone other than scientists. The anticipated eruption will most likely happen around 3 miles below the ocean surface. Scientists explain that the earthquakes range from negative to 4.1 magnitude, meaning only those nearby would feel any tremors. This unusual activity gives us a rare opportunity to study how the Earth's crust forms. The magma beneath the ocean floor is estimated to be almost 1,500 degrees Fahrenheit, but will cool rapidly upon eruption and contact with water. This runny rock will solidify upon contact with the seafloor, turning black quickly. This event will be useful for biologists, too, who will have the opportunity to study the marine animal's response to any changes. Like, run! Antarctica, often seen as a vast icy continent, also holds a volcanic surprise beneath its frozen surface. Researchers have identified over 130 under the western ice sheet alone, making it the largest volcanic region on Earth. 
Most of these volcanoes, about 90, were only recently discovered in 2017. But could any of these Antarctic volcanoes actually erupt? Well, it depends on which volcano we're talking about. While these formations are relatively young in geologic terms, it's hard for scientists to tell if they're still active or not. There are only two confirmed active volcanoes in Antarctica, Deception Island and Mount Erebus. The latter, standing tall as the highest peak on the continent, has been continuously erupting since at least 1972. It's known for emitting gas and steam, and sometimes even throwing out rocks in what are called Strombolian eruptions. One of its most notable features is a persistent lava lake in its crater, a rare phenomenon due to specific conditions needed to keep the surface molten. For instance, it's fueled by a steady supply of magma from deep within the Earth's mantle. This continuous inflow of molten rock provides the material for the lava lake to exist. It also features low ambient temperatures. Despite its location in Antarctica, Erebus has relatively mild temperatures in its summit region because of the heat generated by the volcanic activity. This allows the lava lake to remain liquid rather than freezing over. Deception Island, another active volcano, last erupted in the 70s. While it's currently not showing signs of imminent eruption, it's being monitored closely for any concerning activity. Apart from these two being confirmed to be active, Antarctica is dotted with fumaroles, openings in the Earth's crust that release gases and vapors. Sometimes these fumaroles can create icy towers reaching heights of 10 feet. What we should focus on is maybe supervolcanoes. They're this type that has the potential to produce the most massive and destructive eruptions. Unlike the typical one, which has a single vent, Supervolcanoes have a vast magma chamber beneath the surface, spanning tens or even hundreds of miles in diameter. Their eruptions can have catastrophic effects on the surrounding area and even impact global climate patterns because of the amounts of ash and gases they spill out into the atmosphere. One famous supervolcano is the Yellowstone one, which some say is gearing up for another eruption. It has the capacity to unleash a colossal eruption, spewing over 240 cubic miles of material. As much as we'd like to predict its behavior, volcanoes don't stick to a calendar. Hmm. On the contrary, eruptions simply happen when there's enough magma beneath the surface. There also needs to be enough pressure for the magma to travel upwards. As far as we can measure, these conditions are not currently met at Yellowstone. Sure, many volcanoes operate on a cyclical pattern, but that doesn't mean Yellowstone is overdue. In fact, Yellowstone has had just three major eruptions over the past 2.1 million years. Also, the term supervolcano refers to the formation size, not necessarily how fussy it is. Yellowstone's monitoring is extensive, tracking seismicity, ground deformation, thermal emissions, gas, water chemistry, and surface changes. Signs of an eruption would include thousands of earthquakes over a short period. We'd also see deformation on the ground and weird gas emissions ahead of time. Stable as it might look like for now, the consequences of it having a major eruption could look ugly. Ash dispersion could blanket a 500-mile radius potentially disrupting Midwest agriculture and clogging waterways. Ash and gas emissions into the stratosphere could induce global climactic effects, making our planet colder for several years. And yes, we've seen some research that it shows there's more liquid molten rock under the Yellowstone volcano than scientists believe. But that doesn't translate to imminent danger. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.